Okay guys, so I'm gonna try something a little bit different. It's kind of windy, there's a bunch of noise. So I'm on my phone and I've got my, got my AirPods running for the mic. We're gonna mount the motor, the tranny, we are actually going to put it in the truck. Right now, I'm gonna put the put the lifting plate on here, get it mounted to there, tear this front end down, we'll get it put in place. So I just wanna say, before I went ahead and wasted a bunch of time taking the front end of the truck off, I wanted to make sure that the motor and transmission bolted up because the internet says, yes, they do bolt up, but you can't trust the internet. So, they do. I only have two bolts holding it in place right now because I need to order bell housing bolts. Um, these are just some bolts that I had laying around, but they bolt up. This is a dowel pin location. Um, it fits, you're supposed to use the you can apparently you could use the stock spacer plate which it looks like i can um because the starter still bolts there there's a little access hole here for torque converter nuts except i won't be running a torque converter there'll be a flywheel in there so this is going to be a starter hole yes it's sitting on the ground the oil pan is cracked i have to fix the oil pan or get a new one so that I don't care about. This is what I cared about today was the fact that the MT82 out of a 3.7 liter Mustang V6 does bolt to a 3.5 liter EcoBoost out of an F-150. And for that matter, I'm assuming all V6 transmissions bolt to all v6 motors in the modular system With that being said this setup is going into the truck there was a little bit of messing around with this due to the cross member the mustang 2 cross member actually sits back a little bit further than i had originally planned i guess the i-beam front suspension it's a, the cross member is kind of offset, I guess, but the engine is in, the transmission is in. Everything is pretty tight right now. Like you can see the cylinder head is actually really tight to the firewall. So I'm gonna end up having to clearance the firewall, which isn't that big of a deal. All it is is gonna be a hammer. Nice thing that I've noticed though, is before when the stock frame rails came up, and like this, the turbo oil feed lines were actually sitting on the frame. So now I've got a plenty of clearance here. The thing that I don't like is until I get the manifold and the turbo in place, I don't think I'm gonna have room to run a downpipe without actually maybe getting rid of a section of the firewall here. So I'm hoping, hoping once I get the manifolds and stuff, the manifolds and turbos and stuff on here that'll have some room. I notice the engine is actually sitting on a little bit of an angle because it's catching right on this lip in the oil pan section. So what I'm gonna end up doing before I finish welding this is I'm gonna actually notch, I'll put like a channel or something in here instead of having this completely boxed back there. It fits. Um, I think this turbo will fit easier. Uh, the starter's definitely gonna fit. There's plenty of room down in there. As for the shifter, kinda hard to tell from under the truck, but the shifter actually comes up through the floor, kind of about this section here. And the stock shifter came up basically where you can see daylight through that hole. So the shifter is going to come in quite a bit further back. That kind of sucks. But I do have to get the engine and transmission combo a little bit lower. 
I don't think you're going to get it any further back than it is. Because of how close it is to the firewall. So this is the driver, er, driver's side motor mount plate, which I'll be welding the bushing ends to. We'll have to see how they line up. But it almost looks like something like that will work. I'm pretty excited. This is, this is coming together. Once everything fits nice, I'm going to be able to start wiring up the engine side of the harness. I got two sensors on the transmission that need to be wired in. Um, there's a bunch of stuff on the engine that needs to be wired in. I'm gonna go grab the intake and the valve covers, maybe even the timing cover with a couple bolts. I don't know if you guys remember, but the reason I went to the Mustang 2 was because I didn't have clearance for the alternator between the power steering box. Well, look at all of the clearance I have for the alternator to the basically whatever is wide open here. This Mustang 2 crossmember actually fixed a lot of my issues, but it did cause one more with clearance for the engine. So if I can get the engine sitting a tiny little bit lower, I'll be happy. If not, well, then I guess the big old hammer is coming out and we're gonna smash the shit out of the firewall. We got some stuff mounted to the motor. Valve cover, intake, the coolant return, I think this actually goes to the heater core, but because I'm not using a heater core, this is going to come around to the front of the motor. There's a piece of the water outlet housing that they'll just bypass the heater core basically. Valve covers, timing covers in place. Um, I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like kind of in its entirety. Driver side motor mount, this piece won't stay up. Kind of what it's going to look like is that's not gonna work like i said i hope i can get this motor down just a tiny little bit lower the turbo does fit the bolt-on flange does bolt on back here except this fire the firewall is really tight to it this motor mount's gonna actually sit probably on here as well as down lower when i want to box this in but until i get the motor sitting where i want it to sit i do have a plate cut for on the motor itself this turbo actually fits really well but for the most part this is what it's gonna look like i'm really happy with it the only issue i am now actually seeing is the steering shaft comes out of this hole with the steering rack sitting right there this looks like it's completely in the way i may end up running a dual or might be a triple u-joint setup just a u-joint in the middle down puppy dog ran away skate artist yeah <laughs> he figured out how to go to the yard there's gonna be a u-joint here and then probably another u-joint about this area maybe and then down to the steering rack i'm gonna have to play around with that once i get the rack in place and all of the interior back together but for now this video was about the motor being in place bolted to the transmission and yes an mt82 does bolt to a 3.5 liter keeper piece also before i completely button this up take a look at how much room i have between the rad support and the front of the motor that's actually a lot of room there's a lot of room there at least a foot but you can definitely tell that the motor sits high in the front like i said i would like to be able to get it lower ego boost is in place i do have to build the motor mounts i'm gonna end up pulling this back out notching the cross member getting the motor lower setting the driveline angle on the transmission i think that's it for this video because this is all you guys need to see I'm hoping this showed some progress towards the eco boost swap i hope you guys are liking it let me know in the comments below smash that like button smash the subscribe button hit the bell button for notifications when you want to see more of this and again don't forget to follow on instagram at ruthless garage until next time i'm out